Aging and disease are biochemical processes that happen over many decades. So if we track well-established biomarkers of organ and systemic health, can aging and disease risk be slowed? So that's the central premise of this channel. And with that in mind, earlier this month, I blood tested for the fourth time in 2022. So what's my biological age? So that test is Levine, Dr. Morgan Levine's uh, phenotypic age calculator, which is a metric of biological age. And if you're interested in measuring your own biological age using this test, that link will be in the video's description. All right, so here's that data. You can see first that I blood tested on July 11th of 2022. And when entering the nine biomarkers and chronological age, we can see that my, and chronological age, sorry, we can see that my biological age is 32.6, which is 16.8 years younger than my chronological. Now, this is just entering data into a spreadsheet. If you're interested in screenshots of the actual lab report, all of that data will be at the end of the video. Now, note that Quest's high sensitivity C-reactive protein measurement was less than 0.3 milligrams per liter. So that's the limit of their detection. Uh, so it could be C-reactive protein could be lower than 0.3. It could be anywhere from 0 to uh, 0 0.3, with uh, 0 0.3 being the upper limit. Now, in contrast, at-home blood biomarker testing may be the next frontier for attempting to slow aging. So why is that? Well, first, you don't need to go to the lab. I've always gotten my blood drawn at the lab, and uh, you know I save the time if I don't have to go there, if I can just do it uh, at home. And I can prick a different finger each day using at-home testing, and that's important because although I have uh, about 40 blood tests over the past seven years, so testing at least five times per year, in contrast with at-home testing, I can prick a different finger each day and generate about 40 blood tests, uh, uh, data for 40 blood tests in six weeks instead of seven, seven years. So with that in mind, I used Let's Get Checked, uh, and, I, and I used their high-sensitivity C-reactive protein test to see if it would be as good as the gold standard venipuncture, so pulling the blood from the vein. So first, that's the first question we want to see. The, uh, what's the answer? Is at-home testing using a finger prick in which you then uh, squeeze the blood onto a blood spot card, is that uh, data as good, is the data that we get from that as good as the gold standard of venipuncture? And note that I got my blood drawn at, at the Quest Lab at about 7.30 in the morning. So as soon as I got home, uh, I then used this at-home test. So somewhere around 8.30, about an hour later, and both of the tests were fasted. So then obviously the question is, was high sensitivity C-reactive protein less than 0.3 milligrams per liter using this at-home test? So here's a screenshot of that data. We can see this is high sensitivity C-reactive protein, and we can see that my value using the at-home test was less than 0.2 milligrams per liter. So first, note that the sensitivity of this test, this at-home blood test, was uh, slightly better than the Quest Lab, which is in the lab where they're pulling it out of my vein. So uh, to answer the question, was high sensitivity uh, C-reactive protein less than 0.3 milligrams per liter, Based on this data, it was. Uh, if, if, there, if this at-home test had a C-reactive protein that was higher than 0.3 milligrams per liter, I'd argue that it's not reliable in, in comparison with the uh, Quest Lab, in comparison with getting it pulled out of the, the vein, the venipuncture. Uh, so as a side note, I got this test with the intention of uh, getting a discount link that others, others could use. And even though it's as good as the in, in the in the lab testing i'm not promoting it on this channel so uh if anyone's interested about that story just leave a comment and i'll be happy to explain why that's the case so now we can return to my biological age data and instead of less than 0.3 for c-reactive protein we can put less uh, we can put 0 0.2 uh, the value from this at-home test as the upper limit it still could be somewhere between 0 and 0 0.2 but we can put 0 0.2 in there now and when I do that, now my biological age is further reduced to 32.2, which is 17.2 years younger than my chronological. Now, this is data for just one blood test. So how did these data compare with earlier tests? Let's have some more context. And to do that, let's have a look at biological age res results using Levine's test since 2020. So that's what we can see here. In 2020, I blood tested six times, and my average Levine uh, biological age was 35.6. Similarly, in 2021, over six tests, also 35.6. So thus far in 2022, over four blood tests, I'm currently lower, which is a good thing, 33.9. So I'm off to a good start. Hopefully I can keep it up over the next, I plan on testing about three more times this year. So it'll be seven blood tests in 2022. Hopefully I can uh, keep it up or literally uh, keep it lower, <laughs> not keep it up. All right, now note that prior to 2022, prior to the four blood tests this year, my average biological age reduction relative to chronological age was about 12 years, so 11.9 years 
uh, younger than my chronological over 15 tests before before 2022. But in 2022, those reductions have all been better than 12 years. In fact, my average 20, 2022 reduction over those four tests is 15.2 years. So I've further reduced biological age, biological age using the Veen's test by about three years. Now, note that as a limitation, phenoage includes chronological age in its model, which limits the maximum biological age reduction. So even if all these biomarkers don't change uh, over time, just by uh, increasing chronological age, biological age using this test will increase. So if I'm 80, the best I can do is about 60 using this test. In contrast, aging.ai does not include chronological age in its model, so greater reductions for biological age are possible. So what's my aging.ai biological age? And this test is also free to use. If you have biomarker data, uh, just go to aging.ai. And I'm not sponsored. I'm not affiliated with them in, in any way. And I hope that this test remains free for all of us for a very long time. So when I enter the 19 biomarkers that are found on aging.ai 3.0, as shown there, and again, if you're interested in the full the screenshots of my lab test data, that will be at the end of the video. So when I enter, enter these data, I get a biological age using aging.ai of 28 years, which is 21.4 years younger than my chronological. So just like we did for Levine's test, let's have a look at more context. So previous data for aging.ai age. So for aging.ai, I have data going back to 2009. Now, uh, Back then, I was only testing blood testing about once a year. Uh, every time I'd go to my, uh, my yearly physical with my doctor, I'd record that data in an Excel spreadsheet. So from 2009 to 2013, I only have data for three tests, and we can see that my average aging.ai age was 32 years. And then in 2016 uh, and going forward, I decided to start blood testing more often so I can get closer to the picture of what my bio internal biochemistry actually is rather than only going once a year, which in my opinion is not representative of a full year of data. So from 2016 to 2021, over 27 tests, my average aging.ai age was about 30 years or 29.9. So what about 2022? Well, thus far over the first four tests in 2022, my average aging.ai age is 28 and a half. So again, off to a good start, further reduced when compared with uh, the last uh, five years using aging.ai. Now note that I've been able to keep my biological age using this test in the 29 to 32 year uh, range. So basically I've kept it relatively constant since 2009. So then the big question is how long can I resist age related biomarker changes? So it, will that be for the next five years, 10 or 50 or more? Stay tuned. I, I plan on doing this for as long as I live. So let's see. All right, so what's contributing to these biological age reductions, supplements, fitness, and or diet? And in the interest of time, I won't go over that in this video. So stay tuned for that in upcoming videos. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And uh, if you're interested in discount links, these will be in the video's description. Uh, you can get a discount link to measure your oral microbiome composition if you use my code. Similarly, there's a discount code for chronometer, so daily uh, diet tracking. And then if you're interested in supporting the channel, you can go to buy me a coffee. And again, that link will also be in the video's description. All right, so thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day and let's get to the blood test data.